Today we're going to be checking out a pair of Bowers & Wilkins SW15 subs and the B&W SA1000 amplifiers. Some of you may or may not know, but my everyday speaker setup is the Bowers & Wilkins CT7.4s. I've got 11 of them in my dedicated theater. The only thing I was missing was the matching subwoofers, so that's what we're going to check out today. Let's get them unboxed and see what's inside. Here's some documentation, the accessories pack which has either rubber or spiked feet, and here's a speak on connector if you want to get a more secure connection to the sub. Weight wise it isn't crazy heavy coming in at 66 pounds. It does come with a removable grill that looks to be the same as the one that comes with the speakers, so it will attach magnetically. Since it's supposed to match the speakers, it should have the same matte black finish, and it indeed does. On the bottom are the mounting points for the feet. For size, it measures 21.7 inches high, by 21.7 inches wide, by 10.3 inches deep. So it isn't too big, and it is one of the most shallow subs I've had so far. So if you're putting this in your room, it won't take up too much floor space. And the build quality on this is super solid with a great matte black finish, which won't reflect any light if it's near your display. Up front, you'll find the 15 inch driver that's got a response down to 16 Hertz. Around back are the binding posts and the speak on input. These are passive subwoofers, so you will need an amplifier to power them up. Included with the amplifier, you will get two little rack handles, the rack mounts, the mounting screws, power cable, speak on connector, and here is some documentation. On the front is the standby auto on selector, low pass filter on off switch, Low pass filter from 25 to 130 hertz. The base extension ABC switch, which is either 16 hertz for A, 20 for B, or 25 hertz for C. Movies and music EQ switch. Phase switch at either 0 or 180 degrees. And the volume dial is on the end. The SA1000 is a class D 1000 watt amplifier and can power both subwoofers. Around the back are the RCA and XLR ins and outs, a 12 volt trigger, the left and right speaker outputs, an additional EQ switch for the specific sub you're using the amp with, the speak on connection, and the power inlet. For setup, each sub is going to be plugged into each of the SA1000 amps. That'll be connected to a Trinov Altitude processor, and I'll be using a Kaleidoscape and a Zapiti Media Player for demos. The subs are going to be placed in my theater and matched up with the CT7.4 speakers. I've turned off any room correction in the processor and used only the EQs that are built into the amps. For the deepest response, I used the A preset along with the movie preset. Crossovers were set in the processor. First demo I threw in was the beginning of The Greatest Showman on the Kaleidoscape. It's got a ton of great musical numbers, which I can't play due to copyright but I can play those insane foot stomps that hit from 60 to 20 hertz. As expected, the Dual 15s have some potent tactile response that will shake the pant legs and vibrate the walls. This scene is a great combo of bass that hits hard and also digs down into the lower frequencies, and the SW15s didn't break a sweat with this particular demo. It was also a standout with the musical soundtrack. Since the B&Ws could bang hard with the Greatest Showman clip, I wanted to see if they could still hit hard but at the same time start and stop in an instant, so I threw in my favorite clip on 4K Blu-ray. Fire, fire, 
These guys make you want to turn up the volume because they can belt out some serious body shake in response. When the tanks start to fire, there should be an instant gut check, which they definitely deliver. However, I didn't find them to have the same stop and go force as some other 15s I've had in here or something with a smaller driver. I felt they hung just a tad after each gunshot or tank shot. I'm sure if I didn't have something else on hand to compare to, I wouldn't have thought twice about it because these played extremely hard and loud but they do fall a little short of being one of the more nimble and articulate subs I've heard. We know that these do sound great at throwing some tactile feels in the room, so Edge of Tomorrow on the Cloud Escape is going to wrap up the demo portion. Let's be honest, there aren't too many subs that pass the Edge of Tomorrow test, and the SW-15s also come up short for infrasonics. They put in a valiant effort, but they're not vibrating the hairs on your arms or going to cause any bowel movements. They did an awesome job up until the lowest notes started hitting, and they both gave up before they blew up. Alright, so I did take a few measurements, and together they measured quite well. I didn't apply any room correction to get a smoother response, I just did the distances and level match them in the processor. The first one I set the amp EQ to movies and bass extension to A. Per the specs, A should reach down to 16 Hz, but in my space it starts dropping off at 10, with some output around 7 or 8 Hz at 96 dB or so. This would seem like it would kill the Edge of Tomorrow demo, but they just didn't move enough air to tingle your skin. The next one is EQ on movies and bass extension on B. There's about a 2 dB drop overall. And the next one is EQ movies, bass extension C. It drops about another 2 dB, but I'm also getting a massive dip at 50 Hz. I took one more with EQ set on music and bass extension set to A. It looks similar to the movies preset, but with a big dip at 55 Hz. Of course, this is the response I got from MySpace, so it's likely going to be very different from yours. At the time of this video, the SW15 sells for $1,500 and the SA1000 amplifier is $1,750. As I mentioned earlier, these aren't the quickest or tightest sounding subs I've heard in my space. I'm not saying they're sloppy, I'm just saying I've heard subs that cost more that do sound a little better. If you're planning on using these subs for a dual purpose movies and music system, I'd say these are more impressive for movies rather than music. But that's just my subjective take, you might feel differently. All that being said, I found these to be an all around excellent performer. They had the right amount of weight and slam that you'd expect from a 15 inch driver and they will shake everything in your room with no problems. Pairing them up with the matching CT 7.4 speakers, I was able to cross them down lower to get that tighter response I was missing with my mains and have the subs do the heavy lifting down low. So as a complete system, it really did shine. Another thing I do like about these subwoofers is the fact that they use outboard amplifiers. You don't get anything like a room correction or a dedicated app but installing them in your room is a simple one cable connection back to the amplifier. So you won't need to have a dedicated power outlet near the sub or long extension cables. This makes for a cleaner installation. Now these are part of B&W's custom theater lineup. That's why you're getting the matte black finish and a cabinet that's fairly plain looking. I think most people that are going to buy either the speakers or the subs will have them installed in a wall or hidden somewhere in the room. The custom theater line of speakers has been around for over a decade I believe and they're still going strong today with custom installers so that should speak strongly about the quality and performance you can expect with these speakers and the subwoofers. And it's one of the reasons I have the CT7.4s as my daily speakers. They just sound good and do a lot of things right. The same for the SW15 subs. They do what they need to do. They make lots of bass for movie soundtracks and not fail in any critical areas. They hit hard enough and dig low enough and do everything in between and they do it well. So those are my thoughts on the SW15 subwoofers. Have you heard them and what'd you think? Leave a comment down below and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media and if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content or discounts on audio and video gear, then stop by our Patreon page. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.